Hello there, and welcome. Uh, <laughs> a little bit late, obviously. Um, truth be told, I did wait a week to watch Endgame, so therefore I am a bit late. But a week late isn't too bad, except that this video is being made a little bit later, but who cares? <laughs> um, obviously, Endgame spoilers are something that um, I'm becoming a bit more relaxed by this point in time and I'm still not going to do them. I, I still don't want to spoil Endgame. Well, this is not going to spoil significant parts to Endgame. Like I said, this is going to be minor spoilers, so if you're watching this and you don't want to get spoiled, there are minor spoils. Uh, spoilers. Ugh. <laughs> Here and there. And that's as far as I'm going to go. I'm not going to go into in-depth of what happens, but I am going to like maybe say this, that and the other. Stuff that is not going to affect, say, the ending, if you know what I mean. Um, <clears throat> so if you don't want to see any spoilers, go away now. Um, but if you, you know, and if you are going to go away, I love this movie. <laughs> it's not as good as Infinity War, but I still love this movie. Um, so, yeah, that, that's my full judgement right there. <laughs> but let's go into a bit more depth, if you are staying on board. Um, so, Endgame. <laughs> what can I talk about without spoiling stuff? And I'm trying not, but my best not to spoil certain significant moments. Um, so, Endgame, for me, is the perfect celebration of the MCU. This is the true ending to the MCU. I know there's going to be Spider-Man released later on this year, and I know about the Guardians of the Galaxy Part 3, and Doctor Strange, Black Panther, and Captain Marvel. Um, but, <laughs> let's be honest now, I feel like people aren't going to be watching the MCU films as much after this one, because this is the true ending for the MCU, for me personally, and for a lot of people. And it's such a great celebration of the MCU. Um, in terms of what happens in the film, and just overall, it really does celebrate it and all the things that it has accomplished over the years. Um, and not only that, it does a really, really good job at it. I will say this, the plot is a little bit all over the place. The plot isn't the most well-structured, I should say. You know, they, they make up rules a long way and then these rules get obliterated within seconds so you know the plots plot isn't really that strong in this um but that said uh what it doesn't do well in the plot it does absolutely perfectly with the characters the characters are probably the biggest selling point in this movie um you know, you get a lot from Tony Stark, you get a lot from Thor, you get a lot from Captain America, um, and even Black Widow and Hawkeye, you know, you get a lot from the cast of the Avengers. And that's something that I really love. And even Nebula, a character which, when I first saw Nebula in the first Guardians of the Galaxy, I didn't give a shit about her. I actually kind of hated her character. I thought she was just this generic, old, jealous, bad guy, thug. And the thing about Nebula is, as... The movies have been progressing. She's been getting better and better. And this film is probably her best movie so far. And I'm really glad about that. I'm glad they actually sorted Nebula out <laughs> after a while. Um, of course, what I mean by minor spoilers at the beginning, here's a minor spoiler. Captain Marvel, on the other hand, is... Uh, yeah, she hasn't improved whatsoever. Like, I understand that they want her to be the new you know, leader of the Avengers, the new, you know, face of the Avengers, but so far they've had a very mediocre and poor movie. They've got an actress which needs to shut her mouth, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if she wants to keep out of trouble. Um, an actress that also seems to be getting in a lot of fights with the other actors, um, so that's a good sign. Yes, I've seen the interviews. And not only that, Captain Marvel has not really done anything significant. And, once again, spoiler alert. In Endgame, Captain Marvel is fucking useless. <laughs> it's, it's like a double-ended sword. 
A, I'm kind of glad that she isn't, like, the powerhouse who saves the day. You know, I'm glad it's the maybe the the main Avengers that do the most the most work, I should say. But at the same time, they want us to like this character. They want us to be on board with this character. Yeah, they haven't done anything to make us, you know, like this character. I think she, I, if I can think, she's in the film like for ten minutes max. Five minutes at the beginning, five minutes at the end. And honestly, she only does like a few useful things in those five minutes. And I can think of maybe three useful things. Two of which I'm not going to go in and talk about because spoilers. They, they have quite major spoilers. But one of it is, and I'm going to say this isn't much of a spoiler because, you know, everyone knows this is going to happen. You've seen the trailers. She does save Tony Stark. And this is right at the beginning. So she saves Tony Stark, who's trapped, and Nebula for that matter, on the, um, on the Guardian ship. And then she does, so she pretty much disappears from the rest of the movie and comes back right at the end where she does two useful things. Um, yeah. <laughs> I will say this though. There is a glorious moment with, with Thanos when he gets the power stone and he punches her in the face. That, that was pretty funny. <laughs> I, th I think a lot of people in the audience laughed when that happened because <laughs> I don't think she's popular with the people, funnily enough. I know Captain Marvel did well in the box office, but at the same time, I think a lot of us were, like, swindled into watching the film because of uh, the end credit scene in Infinity War and because of all the hype and all that. And That's another thing. Like, they hyped Captain Marvel up so much that in the end, she was useless. She didn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> but Captain Marvel, uh, you can ignore. Like, literally, you could just remove her from the movie and nothing would change. I mean, except maybe Stark arriving on Earth again. But you could always make up the hypothesis that Nebula somehow fixed the ship and they go into hyperspace. I don't know. Like, <laughs> like I said, you could potentially remove Captain Marvel and the film would be would pretty much be the same. <laughs> um, but I digress. Uh, like I said, the movie does a good job for the most part of the story. It's not the best story, because I will admit, it is quite confusing, and they do make up rules, and they break the rules within like five seconds or five minutes into it, and it feels a little bit all over the place. Like, and my god, the continuity errors are pretty high <laughs> in this movie. Like. So let's get it over and done with. So essentially the plot is split into three different sections. Uh, like, you know, the usual three act structure. Uh, you have the first act, which is essentially dealing with the aftermath. And I really like this moment. I really like the idea of them dealing with the aftermath of the snap. You know, you see how each of these characters are dealing with it. Um, you know, you have Hawkeye, for example, who feels injustice in the sense that there's a brilliant scene, once again, spoiler alert, beautiful beginning, by the way, with Hawkeye and his family. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> but he feels injustice that some people were disintegrated while the likes of the cartel, the Mexican cartel, or, you know, the accuser in Japan, have pretty much been let, or have been let to live. And so he's going out and murdering all these gangs and all these, you know, criminals. <laughs> in this blood-filled rampage. So, you know, you have that sort of reaction. You have Thor, who has practically just given up and just is sitting back, relaxing with um, Cork and Meek. Um, I love those two, Cork and Meek. <laughs> um, but uh, I digress. You know, Cork and Meek, and they're playing... Yeah, they're, they're playing Fortnite. Um... <laughs> I, I, you know, even if I said spoiler that they play Fortnite in this game, in this movie, um, I should point out that uh, it doesn't have any relevancy to the plot. It's just for gag, but it's it's quite a funny gag, mind you. Noob Master sixty nine is Thor's arch nemesis now, um, which I thought was quite funny. Um, but you know, as I'm saying, Thor sort of has just given up and has become this like slob more. You know, you have Captain America who is like meeting ordinary people who have 
dealt with the snap. You have Black Widow who is practically depressed and crying and all the time and you know she doesn't know how to properly deal with the situation you know. You have Rocket and Nebula who have basically gone back to doing their normal jobs you know as Guardians of the Galaxy you know they're, they're, they're basically doing their normal thing they're not really they've said screw it let's just keep calm and carry on essentially. And then you have Iron Man who my god, Iron Man has some of the best character development in the entire film. Him and Captain America, mind you, both of them are not the best when it comes to character development. But he has sort of gone with the route of, it's happened, we might as well move on. You know, and it it's understandable where he's coming from. And so we get into the second, like, act of... Uh, Endgame, which is more or less the time travel element, where, you know, they come up with the plan of essentially stealing the Infinity Stones, bringing it back to the present, snapping the fingers, and bringing everyone back to from the dead. And so it's a time heist. And then they're going to go back and put the stones back where they were, as if it never happened, so everything flows normally. Um, this is where a lot of these continuity errors and Things that can go horribly wrong sort of do go horribly wrong, but because you're watching the characters actually be characters in this film, you sort of, it's strange, you sort of like forget about it, because you watch these characters be characters, and so that's, you sort of forgive it in a way. You know, you see Iron Man and Captain America, you know, having tons of development, and like I said, you just forget about the continuity errors in a sense. Um, there is a shocking scene, mind you, a scene which I didn't know was coming up because I, actually I should probably mention when it came to Endgame, I s practically isolated myself from everything. <laughs> like I wouldn't go on, I wouldn't like talk to my friends, you know. Just checking. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't like talk to my friends, I wouldn't, you know. I'd be on like the bus or something and I'd be you know, about and I'd have my headphones on and I'd be I'd be listening to the Osborne's podcast. <laughs> Funnily enough. That'd be the thing I'd listen to. But I was listening to it like at full volume. Like I was blocking out the rest of the world for over a week just to watch Endgame. <laughs> just when I prepared for Endgame. And you know what? I managed to get away with no spoilers and I'm so glad about that. <laughs> um like, seriously, I am so glad I got away with that. I'm so glad I never s caught even a single spoiler. So that, that was positive. Um, so, of course, when shocking moments do happen in this film, it's like, it, it really was shocking. Um, like I said, I can't really go beyond the second act when they s time travel because, like, you know, it, it really will get into heavy spoilers, so... Honestly, it's hard to talk about this film without spoiling something. Um, what was I going to say? There's a, <laughs> uh, there's, there's a lot of great humour in this film, and it's got a lot of emotion. But I will say this, and I don't really want to give too much away, but I'm sure those who have seen it will hopefully understand, you know... I'm trying not to give it without much context. There is this glorious moment, and it's near the end. And I will admit, I started getting teary eyed, but not teary eyed in, in a sad sort of way, but in just pure happiness, in just pure joy. And there's this moment in the end, and I can't really go into much detail, but what I can say is. The cherry on top for this one beautiful moment, which has the Avengers theme playing on in the background, and the cherry on top to this one beautiful scene is Captain America finally saying the line, Avengers Assemble. Now that's all I'm going to say, and I'm sure those who've watched it already will already know what I'm talking about, but that scene alone easily is the greatest thing in the MCU. That scene alone is the greatest moment 
<laughs> I've seen in any of the Marvel films, or even DC films for that matter, like, that is, it was such a beautiful scene, and I can't really go into much detail other than the cherry on top is Avengers Assemble. Finally, Captain America mutters those lines, um, and I really enjoy it, <laughs> you know. Like I said, I... When it comes to my own personal ranking of the MCU, Infinity War is still number one. Like, that that seriously is better in terms of characters and um, plot, mainly, and just Thanos in general, <laughs> um, villains. Um, but Endgame certainly comes second, and that scene alone, the scene that I'm talking about, certainly boosts it to the second place, and it's a close second. But the only issue is the plot is a little bit broken. Um, but yeah, there's... <laughs> I can't really go into much detail. It really is one of those films that I think you need to watch. And if you don't watch it, then you're gonna... You need to be kidnapped and forced to watch it. Like, you know. Um, it's almost gonna be beat Avatar, and I hope it does, because James Cameron said some... Just some nasty things about you know comic book movies in general. So I I I, I hope to rub it in that cunt's face. <laughs> like I really do. Um, oh wow, Endgame is just brilliant. It really is. It's seriously one of the best MCU films and probably one of the best superhero films in general. Um, you know, like I said, it's behind Infinity War. Infinity War will still be my number one. Um, but, like I said, if I have my own personal ranking of the MCU, Infinity War would be number one, Endgame would be number two, and number three, I'd say Civil War, because Civil War is really, really good. So yeah, watch Endgame! <laughs> Sorry for the minor spoilers, but it's hard to not spoil it at all.